Any farmers we spoke to here at Commodity Classic this week aren't just looking ways to cut back. They're also exploring different ways to stretch their dollar even further. So what are some of the secrets to free soybean bushels this year in the field? And where can growers capture the so-called low-hanging fruit? In our new segment called Breaking Barriers with R&D, Randy Dowdy and David Hula share their secrets. So Randy, oftentimes when we're together with Total Acre, you know, they'll say, hey, if a grower wants 300 bushels, just talk to Dave. If a grower wants 150, 200 bushels, talk to Randy. And it's easier to get that 100 bushel stand of soybeans than it is to get 300 bushel corn. I've never had 100 bushel field average in soybeans. Well, the money is at 100 bushels. Uh, it's, it's glamorous and it's fun to make 150, 200 bushel beans, but we spend a bunch of money that, yes, when you technically look at it, it's not, it's just not. But for the amount of time that you're spending, and for the amount of money that you're putting at risk, it's just not worth spending it. But 100 bushel beans is very attainable. We got a lot of growers that have surpassed 100 bushel field averages on beans within total acre. And some of the, the free bushels that I was taught a long time ago, you know, Dan Poston, former pioneer agronomist, you know, I, I went to him when I wanted to break 160. I said, Dan, I, te teach me, I know nothing about beans, teach me some things that I need to consider. And Dan was sharp and he said, Randy, you need to plant some indeterminates down here in the south. You're going to have some challenges with seed quality. You're going to have some challenges with the harvest. And it, it, the challenges are going to be, obviously, it's hot and it's humid. And, you know, when those beans are ready, they will not stand that hot, the wet feet and they will not stand the, the humid climate. They will deteriorate fast when you from a quality standpoint. So you need to have a combine ready. But indeterminates is going to be a big deal. So we, we approached it. But the one thing that he told me, the longest day of the year does not change. Yeah, June 21st, if I recall. It does not change. Now, Al Gore might say that it's going to change with this whole climate initiative. Uh, here on. we go now. But at the end of the day, um, June 21st, longest day of the year, last time I checked, we need beans to be completely through flowering or at least setting some racines and setting and filling pods the longest days of the year. So planting early as, as you can physically get in the field. You take a lot of what we just talked about, about the corn planter, corn cannot have a bad day. But beans are tough. If they can survive that frost, I'd almost plant beans before I'd plant corn. It's that simple. I'd plant beans first. There's a lot of people across this country that are adhering to that. I think you mentioned earlier today there was somebody in Wisconsin already planted, I guess, in January. Yeah, or in early February. February. Yep. That is insane. But regardless, they got to get up, they got to come out of the ground. Beans are just tough. We need the longest days of the year to make us some money there. Um, and then the next piece would be to get to harvest those free bushels. The next piece that I would say that we definitely need to take and consider is just singulation. Um, one of the biggest things that everybody has covets in a cornfield is that picket fence stand and understanding that corn needs to come out of the ground, it needs to be uniform, it needs to be equidistantly spaced. Well, it's equally important in beans, but that's often the crop that everybody's trying to get through with. They can't control this right thumb. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to plant six, seven miles an hour. If they plant beans at, or corn at five miles an hour, they want to plant beans at six, and let's get done with this poverty pee. But there's a lot of free bushels to be made just by singulation as well. Well, they got those high speed planters. Now, one of the things I want to see your corn fully flowered by June 20, your soybeans fully flowered by June 21st in Michigan. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, that's right. Randy and David are full of timely insights from the field, and we'll continue to provide those throughout the season on the new Farm Journal TV streaming service. We just launched it this week here at Commodity Classic. You can now watch U.S. Farm Report, Ag Day, and all of our shows whenever and wherever you want. By subscribing, you will be the first to our new broadcasts and podcasts all on demand. In addition, you'll be able to watch live broadcast and programming you just won't see anywhere else. It's available on several of your favorite platforms, and you can get it free 14-day trial along with a special discount for early subscribers. Head on over to farmjournaltv.com to sign up. Well, a perfect storm is driving up new and used tractor prices. That's next.